I like this music. Do, 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 do. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Monster Prom. I, uh, this isn't, oh, sorry, I messed up the mic. This isn't really a spooky game, but I thought, you know, monsters, it'd be good for, like, the spooky month. And also, it looks super cute. And also, I just really love dating sims. Like, I, I uh, will go for a full name. Ah, uh, spooky high school. The sweetest years of our lives. Back then, we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid. I feel that. I feel that. But always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. Ooh. You know, him and him I'm not really feeling. But her. I am feeling her. Brad Amira. Ooh, I like that. Hold up. Go back. She's cute too. Well, what's her name? Blue or Vicky? Oh, no, no, no. Oops. Accident. Green or Brian? <laughs> I used to work with a Brian. I freaking hated him. Yellow or Oz? Nah, I'm going with red. Oh, no. Wrong. Light it up! I like that. And we had yet to experience its ultimate challenge, the monster prom. I remember it clearly. Three weeks were left. And as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. Miranda Vanderbilt, 19, a sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. She is very cute. What the fuck was that? I kind of love it. Damien LeVay, 21. I thought this was a high school. A fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love for fire. Scott Howell, also 21, a werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. How cute. Liam de Lioncourt, for something. 400 plus. A hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he was a truly lovable dork. Polly Geist, 22, question mark. A party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. And Vera Oberlin, 23, a mean, self-made gorgon with a merciless sense of business. Only one of these kids is, like, high school age. Or close to high school age, since technically, at most... I guess at most you could be 19. It was clear it had to be one of them. But who? We only had three weeks to choose our prom date. And even more daunting, we only had three weeks to woo them and conquer their hearts. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Teen Wolf. Hot or not. This is... How to deal with this. This is cute. Oh my gosh, look at that little shark. Yeah! I said that wrong, I don't even care. Welcome to Monster Prom, stupidest pop quiz ever! All mines are rotten, but they are rotten in so many different ways. I feel that. Worry no more, we're now using our PhD in bullshit. I also feel that. To diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. I'm the worst kind. I'm the worst kind of deviant sicko. I'm I'm just lame. I'm just boring. That's, I feel like that's definitely the word. <laughs> Monster Prom, Subis, Cos... Uh, pop quiz ever, trademarked. We'll throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into character stats. This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's start. The coolest reality show would be people in positions of power must face all sorts of questions relevant to their field. And if they fail, they lose their job and society wins. Just eight rich people fight in weekly challenges to see who's the best at giving money to you. I like that one. I like that one. Twelve experts on the various arts of seduction must live in a house where they must face a common challenge. Seducing a potato into marriage. Oh, no, I gotta go with that one. So charming. It's your chance to fix global warming. Go ahead. Global warming isn't real. I invented it, and now science is claiming 
authorship because science is a language the cat with no original ideas. Now the world is doomed, but I'll start investing in ships and start a profitable business for the soon to be covered by water world. Interesting. It's time to be a real hero. I'll lead a mission to the sun in order to invite the sun to a party of his life. We'll have so many hilarious misadventures that the sun will eventually become cooler. Winky face. Uh, nah. We go with that one. If you were ice cream, which flavor would you be? Success. Rainbow and gummy bears. Tequila and coke. Meat. Spicy chocolate. No chocolate, no fire. Double creme de la gruyere and meringues. I thought Gruyere was a cheese. Isn't Gruyere cheese? Let's do, this. Let's do this. Why is my fun so why is everything so low? Um We're gonna go outdoors. Ooh, I love that. Damn, my girl looking fine. That day during recess, you start a half hour raid that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point, there are like 300 people. Someone summons a demon from the nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rat party. You gain two fun. Sweet. Later, you come across Damien and Vera in the hallway, nonchalantly holding a locker shut with all their strength. The locker has a sign on it that says, Nothing to see here, and is screaming. Shut the hell up, you! Adorable, fluffy little fluffy. You see, we're spending quality time with our new pet. Isn't that right, Damien? From somewhere within the locker, you hear, My parents will pay anything before Damien kicks the door. Yeah, that's right, adorable, quiet fluffy. Who's got to stay quiet if he knows what's good for him? You know, I don't really have a great track record with pets. I had some mice for half a day, but my hair ate all of them. <laughs> it sure would be a shame if our new pet died before we receive the true joy of pet ownership. Yes, exactly. The sweet, sweet bank account filling, filthy rich making joy of pet ownership. Surely you have lots of knowledge about quote unquote pet quote unquote care. Why not share some of it? Fucking metal. Nice. Perfect. Let's crank that shit. <laughs> Damien pulls out his eye banshee and blasts some truly vulgar sludge core. Curious and intrigued. Sludge core. Interesting. Quickly, the cries of no, please just help me are drowned out by the sounds of a yeti playing the electric pickaxe. This is the perfect cover of comforting sound for this sweet little fluffy to be loved by to sleep by. <laughs> now, do I want to order these Komodo dragon skin shoes in a 4 inch or 6 inch heel? Oh, the joy of knowing that crime truly does pay. You gain two boldness and one fun. Cool. I already freaking love the red dude. Let's do this! We find Damien and Vera hunched over a scale model of Spooky National Bank, made of milk cartons, lunch trays, and ketchup packets. Alright, we'll go in through the side entrance, disable the alarms with an EMP, and blow the safe. Why don't we just blow up the side entrance, and blow up the alarms, and blow up the safe? Because we only have so much C4, Damien. That sounds like a personal problem. What's this thing? Damien points, points to a kosher dill pickle in front of the vault labeled Police Ogre. That's the police over. He got, he's got eyes all the way around his head. Never sleeps. Doesn't take bribes, and is invincible in combat. Can we blow him up? No, we can't blow him up. We need to find a way around him. While well, I'm out of ideas, yo, Red, we'll cut you in on the heist if you can solve this ogre problem for us. Luckily, you're a heist mastermind. Before Vera or Damien can react, you. Quick as a flash, you take the cab over to the bank, walk in the front door, fist bump the police ogre, walk out with all the money, you ride back to school and dump half the money on the table, totally bearing their shitty scale model of the bank. What? How? You explain that you and the police ogre go to the same salsa dancing class. Taking advantage of a personal friendship for illicit profit? I've never respected you more. I assume this pile of money in gold ingots is my share? You nod sexily. 
Hey, where's my cut? I've got your cut right here, interloper. Mira <laughs> stabs Davian with one of the irresponsibly sharp butter knives the school cafeteria provides. You've never been more turned on. Let's do this. Okay, um, our creativity's lacking. So, auditorium it is. <coughs> that day while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the muses themselves had descended to give you figurative oral sex. Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You gain to creativity. After you're walking along, when suddenly a car skids to halt to a halt right in front of you. It's not the most logical location for a speeding car to barrel through, and yet here we are. Vera and Damien hop out. The work isn't bad. It's just not at the level it needs to be if you want to win this all-star drag race against a real badass hunk of metal. What's your plan to win, Damien? Just ride your car really, really fast. A fucking course it is, Vera. That's literally how street racing works. And that may have won you the crown in the past, but it won't work against Justin Darrington, Damien. He's driving the Thunderfuck 5000. Please, please tell me that is a reference to Alaska Thunderfuck 5000. Please. And I'm driving Nancy, a pile of shit I lovingly cobbled together out of every car I've ever destroyed either in a race or just literally destroyed via arson or whatever. And Nancy can take on anyone, anything, anytime. Look at his evil face. I fucking love it. Fucking metal! Fucking metal! The Thunderfuck 5000 is an electric car. Nancy runs on the juice of literal, actual dinosaur corpses. What could be more badass than that? I don't know. Maybe running on pure lightning? Nancy is a piece of shit, Damien. Deep down, you know that she does not have what it takes to win us this thing. Seems like this drag race is pretty important to the two of them, and that they're not going to come to an agreement on their own. Looks like it's up to you to be the voice of reason. And this one? <gasps> Yay! Perfect. So we can get a brand new qualified race car, and Damien can still feel like his shitty subpar car is useful. Nancy is a thing of beauty and grace, Vera. But as long as her genes that live on in whatever machine I drive to victory, the plan is A-OK -okay by me. The three of you get to work setting up what could easily be considered one of the most impressive and high-tech car crossbreeding programs in the country. You find a very shiny red electric limousine to serve as Nancy's stud and start the breeding process along which mostly consists of making the cars a reservation at an appropriately fancy and expensive restaurant and loading their CD players with smooth jazz. Sometime later, Nancy gives birth, don't ask how not important, to the ultimate race car. Look at what we've made, huh, guys? I mean, mostly what Nancy and El Diablo have made, but we helped get them there. Yeah, honestly, this car is a masterpiece. I've been looking for my next business venture, and I think I may go into high-end race car breeding. People make thousands off of breeding horses to raise, and horses want to fuck. How hard could that be? By that logic, I bet I could make millions breeding race cars. You totally could. I'd be your first customer. Um, <laughs> you already were. I'll send you your invoice later. Well, looks like Damien has the race in the bag, Vera has a new business venture, and the world has a new species of super race car. You gain two boldness and one money from a kickback from Vera, which comes with a genuine smile from her. Score. So maybe Vera should be my venture then. I was kind of really hoping to be Damien, but if Vera comes with more hearts, then she's gonna have to. Okay, um, let's go to class. That day you listen to your elders and learn valuable lessons. Sometimes, after all the monster nonsense and the dating gimmicks, you forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary activity at this high school. At any high school, really. You gain two smarts. Woo woo! You see Miranda and Vera chatting away, their eyes gleaming, the gleam of the scheming. 
crowd surfs isn't doing nearly as well as I thought it would. Oh. If it isn't red. Greetings, Miranda. Would you like to be a customer? Once upon a time, surfs were only for the rich and fabulous. That was adorable. Like Vera and myself. But now, thanks to our app, Crowd Surfs, you too can have your very own crowdfunding surf. The app is being generously funded by my royal family who wish for everyone to experience the joys of royalty and get richer off of it. I think our business might be failing because the surfs are simply not of high enough quality to maintain customer interest. The surfs need to have more enthusiasm for their jobs. We need to recruit, recruit from the right locations. Don't be absurd. If there's one thing being royalty has taught me, and there's definitely more than one, it's that you can't, you can trick anyone into doing anything as long as you give them the right incentives. But why not start easily with them easily manipulated in the first place? Red, what do you think? Sorry, I'm going with Miranda. Or Vera. Ooh, I like that quite a bit. I don't even read what it said, but I saw Vera. That's what I was going with. Excuse me. But if there were conventions for daddies, I am... Wait, what? What did I pick? I'm quite sure I would know about them. My father is one of the most powerful dads I know. So if he was not invited... Just stop there, Miranda. Trust me. How does this sound? Free lifetime of submission, dirty talk guaranteed dress code, come as you are. This sounds like a, a BDSM kink. Vera, with the help of a confused Miranda, goes to the next leather daddy convention in town. The next time you see Vera and Miranda, they seem much, much happier. The serps we recruited are so enthusiastic to serve, almost inexplicably so. And as an unexpected fringe benefit, all the serps keep trying to one-up each other's uniforms. So I created a line of latex and leatherwear that's making almost as much as crowd serps in the first place. It's a win-win-win situation. And don't worry, Red, I won't ask how you know so much about the fetish community. Oh, um. Don't ask me about my kinks, Vera. I'm very sensitive about it. Yay, signing with Vera always makes her happy, and to show her appreciation, she gives you two money. She earned, and you gained one smart. Hell yeah! Lunchtime! Let's do this! Let's do this. Um, who? Who? Not you. Who are you? You're just about to take a bite of your sandwich when some douchebag rips a hole in the fabric of reality. My love. I beg your pardon? It is I, the interdimensional prince. Oh, good lord. I have searched far and wide for a hero capable of solving a most fiendish riddle for me. The riddle of... How to get my TV to switch from HDMI 1 to HDMI 2. I've tried everything short of actually using the remote control. You heave a deep sigh and accompany the prince to his dimension where you solve his problem by using the remote control. You truly are both wise and generous. As a thank you, please allow me to teach you one of my kingdom's customary rituals. Perhaps the laser communion might interest you? Or reverse baptism? Or eggs? choice is yours um yeah yo give me some money yo you made the right of poor fiscal decision making i didn't know you were so well versed in the ways of my people of course i'd be glad to demonstrate the prince dresses up in a golden onesie and hires a chorus of monks to chant why are you doing this while he gives you a huge sack of cash the exchange rate for interdimensional dollars to actual money isn't great, maybe because he keeps doing this, but you still gain four money. Ooh, I am rolling in muns. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. Um, who is this? What is the cat? Hey, stranger. It's been a while. I've missed you. It's okay. You can look at my stuff. What? Oh, it's a store. Ooh. I have $14. I'm curious what these events are, so I'm gonna buy this event. Oh, I thought I could buy both of them. Now I'm a little disappointed. 
<laughs> Let's do this. Okay. We'll go to the gym. No. We need more creativity. Uh, no, I want charm. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirit, leading to a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a natural born leader. You gain two charm. While doing that, you've been carrying your newly acquired corpse as if it was a totally normal thing to do. But some people seem to think otherwise. Oh no, it's the four most hateful people in school. Well, why are you carrying a corpse, idiot? Psh, what a shameful display of distaste. <laughs> yeah, what a noob. Carrying on corpses is for noobs. Thank you, Damien. Oh, a corpse! I love corpses. Corpses. Also, I'm super drunk. Okay, the three most hateful people in school and Polly. As the school's social elite, we disapprove of this. I'm the head of the hierarchy and I can't condone such stupidity under our domain. I'm the taste of the hierarchy and I don't approve such trial a word use of a corpse also lesser known fact about corpses they smell i'm the fist of the hierarchy and i want to punch you because punching people is what i do i'm polly also i'm like super drunk so whatever vera says yikes despite your disregard for stupid social conventions and meat and god damn it and school hierarchies, you feel the urge to please them. Maybe because that's what this game is about. <laughs> fair, fair enough. When you bought this corpse, they totally told you it was a fashion accessory and they were they, that they were absolutely not just trying to dispose of a body. But now you're starting to feel they might have fooled you. No time to lose. How can you convince them that corpse is actually a very hot fashion accessory? Um... Oh, I'm so glad that was a good idea. Swiftly, you gather the corpse and place it on your head. Your classmates remain silent, looking at you. The tension is great. You do your best to look serious and fashionable. Hmm, I think what Red is trying to tell us is that this corpse is a hot fashion accessory. Yes, yes, indeed. Most fashion accessories are worn on your head. Hats, glasses, earrings, hats. <laughs> I think it's cool how she was wearing a corpse on her head and she's like, really cool about it fuck i'm like big time drunk like tomorrow my hangover will have a hangover wait am i tripping or is red wearing a corpse on her head i mean i did a bunch of super shrooms earlier so i might be tripping what the fuck polly you're not tripping polly well you are tripping but also red is in fact wearing a corpse on her head and you know what she can just do it in such a confident way i hereby conclude that a that a corpse counts as a very hot fashion accessory. It would also be a pretty convenient way of disposing of the many corpses my ventures might or might not produce. Interesting. I agree. Confidence is what really counts when deciding if something makes for a good accessory, even if that something is completely not hygienic or healthy. Still drunk! And so all of them signed the decree that establishes a corpse as an acceptable fashion accessory as high school social bureaucracy requires. Today is a bright day to have a corpse on your head, uh, in your possession. You gain two charm and one smarts. Hell yeah! Alright, I need to boost up my creativity. And what's the other one? Boldness? Let's do this. <sighs> I guess once we're going for beer, we'll go over to beer and just hang out with her. You take your seat and, if you didn't know any better, you would say that seems like Veer and Polly are almost more interested in their phones than they are in you. And you do know better. And you know that, yes, that is exactly what is happening right now. It's nothing personal, Red. It's just that Polly and I are very engrossed in texting our financial slave. Yeah, it's a pretty it's pretty hard to compete with some guy whose fetish is buying you anything you want. That's my fetish, too. Not buying things for people. Happy will buy things for me. Duh. Good thing he's rich enough to take care of both of us. You know what they say, true friendship is sharing secrets and financial slaves. Still, I do worry that this arrangement might not be sustainable. What happens if he runs out of money? Our cash flow instantly stops. Besides, being handed everything you want on a platter, in this case the platter being an online money transferring platform, is almost 
boring. Yeah, I get that. It's a little less boring when you're on as much cocaine as I am right now, but I see what you mean. What the fuck, Polly? If we could somehow turn this into a business venture, then maybe it would get quite interesting. And we could continue to profit even after he's gone broke from catering to our every whim. I mean, how interesting do you think business actually is? Since he's obsessed with us, we should just tell him to do something totally insane and see if he does it. I don't know. I don't know. A weirdo giving away his money and getting into hijinks is great and all, but I want to start making real money. And I think money is fine and all, but my favorite currency is chaos. <laughs> it seems like the ladies are at a very exciting crossroad. Maybe a random bystander can give them a nudge in the right direction. You can easily... Uh, yes. Aha! I don't even know what it said, but I read the first part of that first sentence and I knew that was for Vera. I should probably read these through, actually. That probably would be a good idea. Aha, uh -huh, that would increase our income exponentially immediately, which are two of my absolute favorite adverbs when it comes to monetary gain. I mean, one financial slave between the two of us is already strangely a lot to handle, so managing an army of them sounds draining. But as long as it's a pyramid scheme where we're at the top of the pyramid, where we don't have to actually do, actually deal with the life, so who cares? Meh, I think I'll just go check on my toilet wine. Your toilet wine? Don't worry about her. Polly wouldn't know a good business idea if it slapped her on the ass. Which happened one time, actually, but it's a long story, so forget it. I'm really curious now, actually. Anyway, we can tell people in order to become officially certified financial slaves, they have to buy a kit of supplies, and they'll start at Dirt Slave, and then if they get five financial slaves under them, they can become a pathetic ground slave, and they can work their way all the way up to Gold, Diamond, Platinum, and sell to Mocha Grand Supreme Slave. This was a great idea, Red. We should go write the business plan together and prepare to profit. Did did Vera just say she wants to profit with you? Holy shit, Vera sharing her class full is like third base for her. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Okay. Let's see. Let's do this. Um Right now our creativity needs some more. We need more creativity. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, you do a terrific job at acting. You act so hard that some of your classmates in the audience throw roses at you. Seven roses, to be exact. Damn. Roses aren't a valid currency or stat in this game. Anyway, you check your converter app to see if this could translate into something a bit more useful. It seems seven roses equals two creativity points. Sweet! You gain two creativity. Awesome. You see Vera looking at her phone. She's obviously pissed, so you decide to go talk to her. Ugh, not another dick pic. Ooh, Vera, you look good. Like a total badass. I mean, I know that's what you've got to expect when looking at as stunning as I do all the time, but still, not fond of dick pics, not at all. When are guys going to learn? Dicks look gross. Sending me a picture of your dick is not a treat for me. I'm not going to frame it and put it on my wall. I'm going to put it in a folder called Sad Losers and then delete the folder. And then I'll probably set the phone on fire, just in case. <laughs> You're pretty unpleasant, right? Help me figure out what to say to this guy so he'll stop trying to make me fuck his wiener. Oh, not bad. Ooh, I like it. Aloof yet incisive. And good job working hard in there, because he sure didn't. Seriously, what kind of guy sends a picture of his soft penis? <laughs> like... <laughs> I guess the same kind of guy who sends a picture of his penis to a girl at all. Oh, I thought there was more to that sentence, but alright. Nice. Bring a firefighter because you're the master of burns. You gain two smarts and one charm. I mean, my head is literally on fire, so like, it makes sense. You know, I thought that there were only supposed to be three weeks, but you know what? Who cares? Um, our lowest stat is fun, so let's go for fun. 
That day during recess, you start a half hour raid that goes full crazy. You spot Juan, the small magical Latino cat who seems a bit sad. He explains to you that he's worried people are so used to calling him Juan, the small magical Latino cat that now everyone defines him only by his size, magicality, ethnicity, and species. He's more than that. You correct him. You don't see him in such simplistic terms or convenient definitions. It's just that there are around 23 other different wands in the school, so adding all that to his name is quite necessary. You tell him you'll never forget about him and the crazy adventures you both lived together at Monster Prom's prequel, Monster Prom Middle School. Interesting. You have a great time remembering these crazy stories you gained too fun. After your previous adventures, now corpses are an acceptable and quite hot fashion accessory. You become a well-known trendsetter advocating for your beloved corpses. Life is now all fancy and business. Or sorry, fancy and busy. <laughs> Luckily, you have your sexy, sexy secretary to help you with all your new tasks. Mrs. Red, we have a problem. If you had assumed your sexy, sexy secretary had to be a female, then shame on you. <laughs> he looks like a lumberjack. He looks like a dog lumberjack. It's been leaked that that Vogue's next issue will include an article titled 10 Reasons Why Wearing- Oh, I, shit. I've done some research and found the journalist. It's a bro called Fyodor Fedora. What should we do, boss? As Vogue rules dictate, the only way to subdue- Oh no! Why did I do that? Nothing like a friendly reminder. Mm, you keep Scott out of the murder because he's too pure for that. You take care of his shit. Boss, boss, it worked. The fedora bro changed his article. Read. The other day I woke up and found to an unexpected surprise from Red, the well-known trendsetter and corpse advocate. Red murdered my parents and submitted my severed head. So unoriginal. It seems she thinks corpses are the solution to everything. It's no surprise her fashion is starting to get old. Also, isn't murdering my parents, like, a crime or something? Just saying. Oh no, corpses are definitely dead now. Maybe they always were, Spot. Maybe they always were. <laughs> also, yes, that was, like, totally a crime. Please come looking for you. You lose one creativity and one money. Fuck! Okay. Um... Let's go buy something else. Hey, last night I read this article on how money causes pocket cancer in the long run. Um, we're gonna buy this instead. Bye, stranger. Okay. I don't know what the book does, but we're gonna find out at some point. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... That day you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. I guess some people just want to watch the world burn by skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms. You give zero shits, but you gain two boldness. You're wandering down the hallway reading Dragon Heat as discreetly as you can, which apparently isn't very because Polly and Vera clock this immediately. Ugh, are you actually reading erotic fanfiction about dragons? Because we love Dragon Heat. I'm all about 19th century Russian literature, but a ghost girl can't say no to some erotic fanfic. Am I right? I've literally been working on my Morgana Von Breast Rite cosplay all week. Don't worry about why. Speak for yourself, Holly. I don't- I've never- Okay, fine, I'm really into Dragon Heat, but don't go around telling everybody- or telling people. Shh, we're clearly safe with her. A fellow Dracophile can always be trusted. Are you sure? I mean, anyone in a dragon heat must have a wicked mind. 297 chapters and counting, and it still manages to amaze me with all the new levels of wrong. <laughs> yeah, right? I fucking love it. Yet, I must admit, I'm a bit vanilla when it comes to fave chapters. Mine is the one where Harold McDonghard or is the Hydra and Doreen Draco Delacourt have to rest at an inn after the Choking Bay adventure. Only discover they have just one available, only one available bed. There's only one bed. The classic fanfic trick that never fails. <laughs> yes, that one was good. I personally prefer the one where Van Vanessaria unmasks her mass savior after a passionate kiss, only to discover it's herself. And they totally what? That makes no sense. 
but I guess most fan fictions don't make sense, so it's okay. I'm not a fan of time travel, but sign me up for some good self fest. <laughs> Amen. What about you, Red? What's your favorite story arc? Nothing to worry about. You'll just be revealing your inner kinks to us. No pressure. Whoa, right? How can we fit about the six caliber arc? With 297 chapters, it's rather easy to forget some arcs. Yeah, but that one was epic. The tension and thrill of wondering who would be the chosen one each each time someone used the magical dildo. What the fuck is going on? I must admit, it was very lyrical. <laughs> what? Oh my god, I could cry. Also, I should praise the fact that it was entirely written from the viewpoint of the dildo. Ready, you're such a kinky deviant. Maybe we should invite her to our own Excalibur trial one day, huh? Let's not get ahead of ourselves here yet. But I might or might not have an official Excalibur trial. <laughs> what? What? All those years of insecurity, and it turns out that erotic dragon fanfics with ultimate icebreakers here have two smarts and one fun to celebrate your unexpected discovery. Intriguing. Ooh, we're almost to the end! Okay, so we are in desperate need of some creativity. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, you are struck by the lightning of inspiration. You come up with the ultimate name for yourself. You tell everyone to call you by it, also known as one of the seven most douchebaggish moves in the world. But the nickname is so awesome, inventive, and appropriate that people decide to go with it. Quite the feed. You gain two creativity. Aw. Oh, we, the devs, dare you to actually come up with a nickname for yourself and ask the other players to call you by that until the end of this run. Well, I'm the only player, so it doesn't matter. Oh, hi, baby. Hey, pretty girl. My baby girl comes and snuggles with her mama while she plays games. So, oh, the prettiest girl. Rehearsals for the play are going as smoothly as they do at any school populated by monsters. And as a, as a good castmate, you're more than happy to run lines with Vera. And not just because she looks great in her costume. Agreed. And for doing that with a moly grapefruit, and with my mother no less, you must die. And then the director said I could improvise any kind of assassination I want. Now, I'm someone with a reputation of knowing a thing or ten about murder. So, I don't want to just go up there with some run-of-the-mill knife-through-the-eye kind of deal. What kind of unexpected onstage murder would really knock him dead, so to speak? Bore them to death, that's complicated. Um, that one? Damn it! No, not so creative. Which is exactly what I'm looking for. Together, I'm just gonna. Um, I'm just gonna keep going and hope to God. Okay. Hopefully Vera's not too angry at me and will let me sit there. As you approach the table, you see Vera delicately lifting a fork full of quinoa to her mouth. She brings lunch from home when... Food, fork, six, eight. Who do we deliciate? Eating, eating, yay, eating. Ugh, Scott, what on earth are you eating? I'm cheerleading you to help you eat, be the best eater in the whole school. Oh, how cute. What causes obsession with cheerleading me through mundane activities that require no cheerleading? Everything requires cheerleading, silly, as we have cheerleaders for our cheerleaders. But I can see my cheerleaders not cheerleading's not working. You haven't eaten anything yet. That's because you keep startling me with your damn cheerleading. I can't eat when I'm startled. No, that can't be it. I must not be cheerleading hard enough. Hey, friend, maybe you can help me. Um, you should be cheering for the. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, duh. It's just like when we cheer for other teams to lose instead of cheering for our own team to win. Yes, I invented that cheerleading strategy. Strategy. It gives us a huge psychological edge against teams that hate losing. I'm gonna go try it right now. Those vegetables are gonna get so inspired. Scott runs off to the kitchen to inspire the vegetables. You can still hear his muffled shouting from the back, but it's not so bad. 
<laughs> Thanks. Now I can finally enjoy this quinoa and baby tears without baby tears without unwanted encouragement. For the next week, all the cafeteria seems extremely eager to get in your mouth. Cheerleading really works. Let's do this. Mm, okay, so creativity is still our weakest. But I'm gonna, you know, we haven't been to the library yet. That day you spend some time on the library's PCs playing some good old online poker. Gambling seems like a stupid and dangerous decision, but who cares? This time it paid off, so fuck it. You gain too money. Later, you're carrying around your precious dragon heat when you're spotted by Miranda and Damien. Wow, dragon heat, I love it. Also, you may not know this about Damien to look at him, but it turns out that he, too, is a hopeless romantic at heart. Are we reading the same series? A minute for Dragon Dog, Mary. Nothing so bad yet, as so good as a billionaire dinosaur made me gay. <laughs> what? Damien, you are being utterly foul. Don't profane the deep emotional connection between Harold McDonghart and Godiva Gal Galantina. Deep emotional connection? Is that why the latest chapter ends with Harold finally boning Godiva and then she wakes up to find him gone? The cliffhanger must be entirely misleading. People simply don't abuse each other's love and trust that way. I worry about you, Miri. I really do. I just desperately want to know what happens next in Dragon Heat. You think Harold is capable of being so mean-spirited? True art... Let's get you. Hmm. Love it to lie. I don't know. Let me take you for That one. Oh, yeah! A date in the midst of a school day? Why? My duty, responsibility, and breeding says no. But my heart says yes. I have a midterm and interdimensional piece 305, so anything's better than that. Oh, huzzah! I do love being courted. Let us flee to the absolutely most romantic date that has ever happened to me, ever. Yay! That's a high bar. Luckily, you're a romance expert, having spent literally all your high school plays, high school, your school days planning for prom, which is a single night of the year, instead of paying attention to the studies that might benefit you later in life. You show up with chocolate flowers and a bevy, a bevy of Merslaves for Miranda and a pack of matches and a gallon of gasoline for Damien. The three of you go on an absolutely splendid date. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Two fun, one charm. Ooh, looks like we're in the last week before prom. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. Um. That day while rehearsing for the class, I just need to get the creativity up some. You aren't especially good nor inspired. For once, it seems you aren't getting the classic creativity boost from the auditorium. But afterwards, while talking to your classmates, you're having trouble conveying your point in discussion. She decided to convey it through music. You start singing and suddenly everyone else joins you in a kick-ass musical number. It's so amazing that the people with whom you were arguing totally get your point and change your minds once the song is over. You gain two creativity. Yay, everything's in the teens except for money. Hey Red, remember that one time at that one party where you explained to me in great detail your brilliant secrets of the business world? Holy shit, you do not. That doesn't sound like area of expertise at all. You must have been pretty drunk. But it's Vera, so you smile and nod. Well, I will be attending a very fancy and important... JC, what are you doing? You are lucky you are so fucking cute. Uh, blah, 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 for powerful people by exclusive invitation. And by exclusive invitation, I mean I'm going to use my Gorgon powers to turn the concierge into snow and then sneak in. I'd love to see you put your other people's money where your mouth is if you're not doing anything tonight. You were planning on reorganizing your collection of very rare mint condition Pokemon cards. <laughs> but, or the popular trading card game based on the even more popular video game Pocket Humans. Which each card depicts a human being with a specific job and bio. But that can wait. So when the time rolls around for the fancy business dinner, you shove them in your pocket and roll out. Red, over here. Glad you can make it. I've been raking in business cards and hand over claw so far. I met Gertrude Gorgonzola, the diamond tampon tycoon, and Ray K. Bebop, the 
social media influencer rapper robot and they're both very excited to do business with me plus half the people in this room now follow me on instagram because i had zombie tech mobile steve jobber walkie hack into their accounts for me have you how have you done so far you turn out your pockets and show via the evidence of your endeavors which consists of the lobby card for the hotel the convention is the only thing handed to me taking out the word room Maybe I should have invited someone else. Literally anyone else. No, it's okay. You still have an hour of the event left. It's time to pull out all the stops and choose an amazing tactic to get as many business cards as you can to prove to figure out what a valuable business asset and or prom date you are. Hmm. And business of people. Um... Oh god. Oh god, this is good. Okay, um... No! Fuck! God damn it! I knew that was a terrible idea. Oh no... Oh no... I'm sorry, Vera. <laughs> oh no! I ruined everything! There's only two days left! Maybe I still have time to make her not hate me. You approach Liam and Vera's table to find them thoughtfully tasting several glasses of wine. This school has literally no rules, apparently. Ah, wine, the most exclusive of beverages. Even a vampire such as myself cannot resist its class and allure. Do you know a lot about wine, then? I'm having dinner with the King of France next week, and I could use some pointers. France doesn't have a king anymore. That's what the media wants you to think. So do you know about wine or not? Alas, in my centuries of living, I've only learned how to look good holding wine, not how to evaluate it. All I know is that I'm not drinking another glass after that one. Vera points to the bottle with Polly's toilet wine <laughs> written on it in permanent marker. What I wouldn't give for an experience sommelier to help us judge which wine is best. You know nothing about wine and you're pretty sure most sommeliers just make stuff up anyway. You solidly recommend and let's see, try the sangria, it pairs with seafood and blood. You must taste of poison. Hmm. Why would you want to disguise the taste of oh, you're going to poison someone? Of course you are. You're always poisoning people. I'm so glad for that decision. Quiet. No, I'm not. People in no way directly associated with me are always poisoning people, and soon they will strike again. France has suffered under its unjust king for too long. Plus, he called me fat at a party once when I was 11. Who is this king you keep talking about? I'm telling you, France doesn't have a king anymore. Soon, Liam. Soon. Vera is so thankful for you to to you for solving her assassination problem that she lets you braid her snakes. You get bit a few times, but it's so, so worth it. Okay, we fucked up a few times. Well, I, I've, I've fucked up a few times. And we've done great a few times. So, I guess... Okay. Mm, we'll at least kick our boldness up. Back to the teens. Ah, uh, like no authority, but you don't stop there. You want the world to know how reckless you are for the rest of eternity. So you do some graffiti on the wall. No way! The graffiti says, I'm bold as- I'm bold as fuck. And you know what? It turns out the wall is a magical wall that grants wishes. What a wall. A deep voice resounds from within the wall and says, Well, not bold as fuck, but maybe a little bold. And then you gain two boldness. Oh boy, that's an- that's one opinionated wall. Anyway, lucky for you. You're doing the thing that gives you most life, reading Dragon Heat, when you're approached by Scott and Liam. Aha! A fellow connoisseur of the Dracophilic arts. What is with that face, Liam? Here, Scott and I are oh, Scott and I are also experts on the topic. An unexpected duo. Yeah, Liam and I are fandom buddies. We love to discuss the things we love in our favorite stuffs, wikis, and forums. We're the best fan of buds, even if we don't always agree, like with Starco and Markapu thing. With the Starco and Marka <gasps> Oh 
No, it's just, look, 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 look. Starco all the way. You cannot. No, Mark does not go with what's her face. No, I can't even believe you would suggest such a thing. Ugh. Is it Hickapoo? I can't remember. Uh, first, let's be clear. I engage in passionate fandom conversations only as an ironic way of celebrating low culture, which I truly despise. You know what, Liam? Shut the fuck up in your ugly sweater. Second, for the hundredth time, after spending years in Hecapoo's- oh, I was right. Sort of. Hecapoo's dimension, Marco is now actually in his 30s, so it isn't right if he dates a 16-year-old. He's a teenager when he goes back to normal. No, he can't! Ugh. These details matter, Scott. Think how wrong it would be for me in my 400 years to date people from this school if all of you were actually teenagers instead of being much more conveniently in your 20s. <laughs> Wonderful. Anyway, enough meta discussion. Scott and I here are in a situation. Even if our opinions differ, we agree our opinions are superior in comparison with the rest of the strangers on the Dragon Heats wiki. Yes to that. Liam here is like super smart and I'm a good boy so my idea should be good too. Oh Scott, you adorable little whatever you are. I know he's a werewolf but like just look at that face. <laughs> Total judgment on that face. But people in the wiki can be like really mean sometimes. We need to gain the respect so we can convince them to be good boys too. Scott is right. We need to somehow earn the role of moderators so we can show all the lesser beings <laughs> who's boss when it comes to the Dragon Heat fandom. But how? I'm sure you'll give us an absurd yet effective idea for a solution, as can be accepted from good old Red. Mm, ask them nicely. Like, fuck. Oh. God damn it. Why do I suck at everything? I'm just gonna skip it, because I don't want to. Um, uh, two charm and one creativity. Well, I guess I'm still mostly in the teens. Okay. Ugh. This is gonna end terribly, isn't it? Let's do this. You finally pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you. You're asking me to prom with you? Have you seen him? Oh no! Why? This is like the worst day of my life. Damn, you're bad at interacting with people. To repent for the sin of making such bad choices, you were forced to walk around the school in the nude, accompanied by a nun who chanted shame <laughs> over and over while ringing a bell. Classic. Red most likely to be Razgard, the space goddess of illusion in disguise. Interesting. This is so disappointing. Why do I suck so bad? <laughs> I got so many hearts! Those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After Monster Prom, we kept living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning who we were and who we could be. And you know what? As it always does, life happened. And it was wonderful. Damien became a renowned drag racer until he died in the most badass way during a race. At the funeral, you spotted him hidden among the crowd. He winked at you. Cool. Vera really bit, built the Overland Empire into en endless greatness. They own a shameless number of companies. It's known that they're also into lots of sketchy businesses. But no one does anything about it. I mean, who in the hell would try to stop Vera Overland? Miranda got a job at being princess of her kingdom. Which it is... Which it was actually kind of a job already. Well, you surely don't see her complaining about it. During those three weeks, uh, I was six, six weeks, Monster Prom seemed bigger than life, and then it was gone, just like that. The battle for Monster Prom might have ended then, but there were lots of battles left in that war called youth. But once again, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna watch all of this. Um... I'm just gonna leave it here, guys. Uh, I mean, the game's over. I'm just like, okay, cool. I have unlocked four new images in the gallery. Cool. So, 
I love dating sims. Like, I love, love, love dating sims so much. Usually I'm not this bad at them. Usually I'm kind of decent at them. But I just looked at this one. But it's whatever. It was a lot of fun. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I promise I'm not normally this shitty. But I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!